What is the Vatican? Is the Sistine Chapel the Vatican? Where is the Vatican? Are you going to visit the Vatican while you're in Rome? Ah, now we know where the Vatican is, don't we? What would you think if I said you have to leave Rome and enter into another country to visit the Vatican? When asked if you will visit the Vatican, people most likely mean the Vatican Museums. Vatican is a noun, and in this case, both a place and a thing. The Vatican is the palace in Vatican City where the Pope resides and the government of the Roman Catholic Church. Government? The Vatican is a government that is self-contained with everything it needs to survive as an independent state. In 1929, the Vatican became the smallest country in the world, both in size and population. 1929? How is this possible with the existence of popes for 2,000 years? Popes had acquired vast amounts of property around Rome called the Patrimony of St. Peter as early as the 4th century. Papal States, also known as the Republic of St. Peter or Church States, were territories of Italy from 756 to 1870 that the Popes ruled. If you remember in the Venice video, I mentioned the forming of the Kingdom of Italy. Rome became the capital of Italy in 1870, which is where the Popes lived, bringing an end to the Papal States. With the fall of the Papal States in 1870 came the Roman question, or unrest between the Popes and the Italian government until 1929. The Pope's relation to the Italian state was unsettled during this period known as the Savoyard era in which the Popes voluntarily confined themselves as prisoners in the Vatican. Benito Mussolini became Italy's prime minister in 1922. He wanted to attract people to him which could only be accomplished with the church's help. However, the dispute between the church and Italian government presented an obstacle. To remedy this, Mussolini decided to give the Pope governmental control, similar to those during the days, the years of the Papal States. Therefore, on the 11th of February, 1929, the signing of the Lateran Treaty gave Mussolini the church support he wanted while keeping the Pope from interfering in any political decisions that would be made in the unified country of Italy. And at the same time, it gave the Vatican the sovereignty it sought as an independent country. And that is how a city within a city, within a country, became the smallest country in the world. Now you know why you can leave the small country of Italy without leaving the city of Rome and physically step into another country. The Vatican is also the country with the smallest army in the world. Swiss guards go through a rigorous training to protect the Vatican. We constantly hear about treaties being broken, but a very interesting bit of information is during World War II. Years after a treaty signing, while German troops occupied the city of Rome, the Vatican City was neutral and left alone. If you thought this was interesting, then let's talk about the Vatican from a tourist or Vatican Museum perspective. Do you want to hear about the Sistine Chapel? Before arriving at the Sistine Chapel, we walk through the Vatican Museums. The Vatican Museums have eight miles of corridors and many museums or galleries. Let's take a moment to see some of the beauty.
The Sistine Chapel is perhaps the most famous chapel in the world and is named after Pope Sistus IV. You know, Michelangelo painted the ceiling. But did you know that no one could see the art artistry? Talking is not allowed in the chapel because of mass and prayer being held. Photography remains forbidden inside the Sistine Chapel because of the ease of maintaining expired copyright issues. However, continue watching to learn why no one could see the artwork. Did you know Michelangelo did not want to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel? Did you know he was one of the designers and architects? Michelangelo considered himself a sculptor much more than a painter. As such, he was reluctant to paint the Sistine Chapel. Construction began in 1473 and was completed in 1483. In 1508, Michelangelo commenced to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. It was a masterpiece to behold. Upon completion, four years later, in 1512, it opened to the public for viewing. I thought you said the paintings could not be seen. I did, I did. So are you curious as to why it couldn't be seen? Since 1492, the chapel has been the site where the College of Cardinals gathered to elect a new pope. The chapel has a special chimney that is used to broadcast the Cardinal's voting status, while might white smoke indicates that a new pope has been elected, while black smoke signals that no candidate has received a two-thirds majority. Other religious and official papal activities occur in the chapel as well. Are you seeing the picture? No? Don't worry. No one else was either. You see, for 400 years, well before electricity, these types of activities were held in the chapel with candles and kerosene lanterns. The soot blackened the ceiling. Now you know why no one else was able to view the masterpiece. A major 14-year restoration of the Sistine Chapel began in 1980. Now we are able to view the beauty that we hear about. Unfortunately, some claim that the restoration brightened the original work. What nonsense! Before the restoration, you learned in school that Michelangelo painted the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. The restoration permitted us to see the brilliance and vibrancy of the lost treasure hidden by soot. The most famous painting in the chapel is the creation of Adam which is surrounded by other paintings representing the nine stories from the book of Genesis. Did you know that Michelangelo's 1541 rendition of The Last Judgment, painted depicting the end of days and second coming of Jesus Christ, was not the first painting over the altar? Pietro Perugino and other artists also painted parts of the Sistine Chapel. It was Perugino who first painted a fresco of the Assumption of the Virgin on the altar wall of the Sistine Chapel. It was not uncommon practice for their work to be replaced. Many artists suffered a similar fate during the Renaissance period. Would you be surprised to hear that the ceiling was repainted? Michelangelo's original Last Judgment, like much of the art during the era, included fully nude human figures, which other artist, which another artist added drapes and fig leaves to cover the nakedness a year after Michelangelo's death. This came about due to the demands of the papal members claiming the nudity was obscene and improper. In fact, a law censoring nudity in religious art was created the same year. Pietro Perugino painted many other fresco scenes in the Sistine Chapel. It's believed that it was he who was in charge of the Sistine Chapel painting project. 
It seems reasonable. Although all the notoriety goes to Michelangelo, who had no interest in painting the chapel. Just as surprising is that Raphael Perugino's pupil seems to have benefited more than Perugino. If you remember from the Rome video, Raphael is the artist entombed in the Pantheon. Perugino was also the only artist to leave his signature in the chapel above the baptism scene in the first compartment of the north wall. His creativity is visible with Rome's landscape of the Colosseum and the Pantheon in the background. Where is the best place to begin discussing St. Peter's Basilica? As you can see, it's a beautiful place. So, let's start with some basic definitions. St. Peter's Basilica is the largest church ever built. It is not a cathedral like the Cologne Cathedral, but a church. A church is run by priests. A cathedral is a church run by a bishop. A basilica is a church promoted by the Pope to a higher level because of its spirituality, history, and architecture. All are churches. A house of worship Christians go to to pray and worship, but of different status. Earlier, we discussed the popes having acquired property around Rome in the 4th century. Construction of St. Peter's first basilica over St. Peter's grave in Rome began during this time in 324. Wars and invasions resulted in constructing a 39-foot wall around the basilica for protection in 852. Expansion and modifications of the wall occurred for the next 800 years. Leaning walls and dusty frescoes gave the reigning pope the idea to erect the current basilica in the mid-1400s. Eight popes and 50 years later, construction would finally begin. In the meantime, Perugino created a fresco in the original basilica, which set the stage for his work in the Sistine Chapel. Think back to the Clone Cathedral video. 250 years after the construction of the Cologne Cathedral, and before its completion, St. Peter's Basilica began. 120 years later, the Basilica, the world's largest and most elegant church, is complete, unlike the Cologne Cathedral, which would take another 250 years to complete. Utilizing foundational elements from the original structure makes the current Basilica's foundation nearly 1,700 years old, or almost as old as the rock or foundation upon which the Catholic Church was built. St. Peter's Basilica interior is deceptively large due to everything being proportional. Similar to the Pantheon, letters high above look normal size. Seeing gold coffered ceilings in front of you is always breathtaking. With a height of 150 feet, how big do you think are the inscriptions? You can see they are taller than people. They are 8 to 9 feet. The statues on both sides of you increase in size the further up the wall, giving the appearance of all looking the same size. As astonishing as the letter, the ground level statues are 6 feet normal human size, but grow four times to 24 feet in height. St. Basilica's dome was inspired by the dome of the Pantheon. Around the dome, the inscription reminds us of the words Christ to Peter, as recorded by Matthew. Duas Petrus, es super en Petrum, 
verificar expresión león es típico sabo aves rain calorum you are the rock and on this rock I will build my church and to you I will give the keys of the kingdom of heaven natural light illuminates the lettering early Christians used creatures as symbols of the four gospels as mentioned in the Venice video Saint Mark is symbolized as the winged lion in the four spandrels of the dome you will find medallions depicting the four evangelists Matthew with the ox Mark with the lion Luke with the angel and John with the eagle the power of human touch is readily apparent when viewing Saint Peter's foot as he sits on the throne being worn down by the touches of those devoted there is so much more to see and tell that it would take much more time as per the Trevi fountain wish I will visit Rome again when I do I will tell you more about St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican.